In this video, we are going to discuss beat tracking and tempo estimation from a music signal. So, a beat tracking is a task which finds a point in time when you are listening to a song and you want to tap. So, we are going to discuss it later. So, let's go with some definition first. So, what's a beat? Beat is kind of our impulses which are periodic in nature and mostly it's like uh, you want to tap your foot like this and the next definition we are going to go through is tempo it's basically a reciprocal of a beat period it defines that number of beat occur per minute now let's uh, see what I'm meaning is suppose if you have a song which is this long right and you have beats like this occurring across the song if the song is eight four minute long and you have 320 beats equally space so your beat tapping period would be around 320 or it would be around 80 beats per minute but however it is not uniform this is if we have equally space beat but sometimes it occur that certain beats are condensed here and they are spaced here so you have one something called the global tempo which is across the music signal and local tempo sometimes local tempo can be higher here and can be lower here so now uh, they both are a fundamental property for music if you are listening to a song so now the main thing we are going to discuss here is node onset so let's take an example uh, if you're playing a piano and you play a note then there's a sudden increase in energy of a signal so that sig energy is like this like is mentioned here like this so it has different phases associated with it the there's a phase in which the energy like amplitude is high as is increasing it is called as attack phase and then there is a period in which it is stay constant roughly constant or sl small decay something like that it is called as transient period and then there is a period with, which it is decreasing in nature that's a decay so our node onset is not a period but a moment of time when your energy is increasing or just starting the attack phase so this whole problem can be thought as an event detection problem in which our task is to determine a node onset. Now beats, no node onset makes a beat but it's not vice versa. Now uh, let's take some example and see what I'm trying to say. Suppose if you have a simple signal and something like this and this you can see that uh, detecting node onset is quite simple like you know you just, just measure the change in energy with the positive that's a node onset kind of a thing but if you have somewhat some kind of non-percussive music for example if you have a violin in which there is there's a slow energy increase rather than you know an abrupt change like a piano in which ding, something like that but piano is like kind of a thing right so there the, it, the problem become harder because of the underlying assumption that you are making earlier and it will become even harder if you are playing with a kind of a polyphonic music in which there's a increased degrees it's like this like you know there's no clear pattern like this so it even become harder so let's just an example uh, so basically this is a queen example and the one by the dust so it's a clear example because here we can you know listen to the beats clearly so let me play the example and then i'm going to come on the area so you can see the thumping sound right those are beats or rather known onsets and we are going to determine the beats based on that so in the whole music you are going to see like this like heavy one the dust. The one the dust. right 
there's a increase in energy then decays then another even increase in energy decays so it's more like that so now what's happening here is that you have clear signal like this and we can just you know use the algorithm to find out okay here the bass is playing here the drum is playing here's something else is playing and these are kind of our beat or neuron sensing so there's a like this is a time representation and the frequency representation and we are going to use it later on to determine which are not on sets and what make a piece so the underlying challenges with uh, the problem is that uh, we can detect a uh, node on set when it's a hard drum beat kind of a sound but not when the sound is slow, like uh, soft for example violin and the changing tempo makes it harder as i said earlier for example here that you can have changing tempo sometimes change your tempo is really high here then suddenly decreases and then suddenly increases or something like that so it becomes a little bit harder harder so the next thing is kind of a rhythm displacement we are not going to discuss right now but yeah means these are the challenges associated with detecting notes on sets or rather beats So what are the different node on detection method? In general, they can fall into two categories. One are data driven, one are not data driven. So data driven methods are stats based method. By that I mean like we have a model or statistic model which works here. You feed a large amount of training data as an input and the output could be either a classification based method or regression based methods and the classification task could be detect whether the incoming node is a node on set or not a node on set and a regression output could be directly fed into another function which determine the same objective so we can use a variety of new network for example we can use a hidden marker model or any other kind of a method so now what is the non data driven method so non data driven method generally you use uh, raw data they extract the features from this data set either into time domain or frequency domain and when they extract the signal they use algo to work directly on those extracted features and the features could be like magnitude phase, energy, power, spectral de density or something else. So currently the at this moment of time unknown data driven state of the algorithm using complex for feature. So in this lecture itself we are going to use a known data driven algorithm. So let's discuss a general beat track detection algorithm. It can be fairly divided into three parts. The first part is measuring onset strength. By that I mean you have a wave signal which is in time domain and you need to find out what are the different onset events associated. For example, if I zoom in here, you can see that this line denotes the start of an event again this line this line this line so there are multiple events which are occurring here so the first thing is to de determine the onset events or the strength of onset event now different signal are different strength for example you can see this is a much larger signal as compared to this one now the second part of the algorithm is to determine the tempo estimation so what we are going to do is we are going to pick the output of the first algorithm and fed into the second one so what we are going to do is we are going to use some techniques which are going to discuss later to determine the period in which a tempo has been associated for example like uh, what's the tempo between this and this period so example for example it could be 16 beats per minute or 16 beats per second whatever so this is the second task to determine the estimated tempo. The third task is 
to actually filter out or you know include more events which are consistent with the tempo so we have detected a lot of bounce and strength but they might not be the relevant ones or they might be fake ones so we need to combine these two and determine like which uh, onset events are actually good for the beat track so how can we measure our onset strength for that we need to do a series of steps the first step is to compute a spectrogram or short term forest time series so what we are going to do is we are going to detect change in energy signature of frequency content by applying short term fourier transform to our signal and when we apply the signal it detects local changes in energy and it plot a image like this in this image we can see that the y axis denote the frequency component between range 0 to 12000 or something like that and the x component denotes time in seconds so it the signal must be up to 12 seconds you know in nature or the 12 second music signal and then now the next step what we are going to do is we are going to apply long compression on our spectrogram so what is going to happen here is uh, the low compression is going to enhance the weaker spectral component especially in high frequency range for example in this image you can see that only the lower frequency components are active with the higher or in darker shades so they are not active at all but after applying low compression you can see you know the whole spectrum changes it the vibrancy come in picture and now the higher frequency components are active the third step is we are going to apply differentiation row wise by that i mean is we are going to pick one frequency and apply differentiation on each row so for example we are going to work with 2000 frequencies and 2001 2002 and 2003 separately so when we apply differentiation what we are doing is we are interested in finding increase in energy so let me tell you how differentiation work so when we talk about differentiation so what's happening here is that uh, dif when you apply a differentiation or d by d by dx and some signal for example signal is x so what happens is it measure change in value so if the curve is positive in nature our differentiation should be positive and if it is decreasing the differentiation would be negative now uh, as we recall that node onset means this region at which the intensity of the signal has started increasing so the differentiation will automatically cover this part so it will phase out or filter out the content which are decreasing in nature and it will only pick the node onset and that's exactly we are interested in so now when we have differentiate differentiated our low compression this is what we got so the next step is accumulation so what do we mean by accumulation in the accumulation process what we are going to do is we are going to combine oh, like in a columnar fashion for example at time zero we are going to combine all the frequency component and we are going to plot a value in this novelty curve so by that i mean is that they as you can see like there in this area we have large number of light shades or red shades so the value of novelty curve is larger here because accumulation across the frequency band is larger here and similarly the case is here whereas the area in which the novelty like there are some activation but most of it is blank or black in nature you can see the small small spikes here so that's what we mean by accumulation so when we accumulate the signal our curve look like this so then what we are going to do is we are going to compute average 
and then we are going to subtract the average from the numerical curve and then we get something like this right so uh, then we can just apply a normalization on top of that which will give us something like this so now as you recalled earlier that uh, novelty curve give us peaks which are good candidates for node onset but that doesn't mean they are not onset so one method of determining node onset is clipping peaks by that i mean you can apply a threshold and say that if the the magnitude is greater than some defined threshold say 0.5 or 1 then only we are going to consider it as a node onset so if we apply a threshold as one only two peaks will remain if we decrease the value the multiple peaks will remain however it's a very fragile step so it's kind of a kind of a hard coding so we normally we don't do that we will arrive at a, some automated process to doing that but for now this is the process that uh, by applying like how to measure onset strength so here we are getting is a normality curve which is giving you the onset strength across various time intervals for example at six seconds the node strength is something like this so uh, right so this is uh, like the summary is like we can calculate the novelty curve by capturing signals property like energy and spectrum and this methods only work when we have a percussive music only uh, and it will not work on harmonic music uh, the next thing is peaks of novelty curve indicate node onset candidates like each one is a candidate but doesn't mean they are not onset and the extraction of node onset can be done by peak picking method which is a thresholding in nature so in tempo estimation we try to estimate the tempo of our music signal so there are multiple kind of tempos one is a global tempo which is across the music signal and there is local tempo which are local to sub parts of music signal we are going to come on that later so now the objective of the tempo estimation is to reveal the periodic structure of node onset by that i mean is that our like suppose this is our novelty curve something like that so there might be situation like this region has some periodicity this region might have some other periodicity and similarly other region will have some local periodicity which is different from the global one so the second thing which we want to do is we want to avoid node onset determination by peak picking which as we mentioned here earlier is like putting a threshold above a certain value and say okay the nodes which have strength above a certain threshold are our own sets we are going to avoid that and third is we are going to analyze the above novelty curve with respect to periodicities so now uh, the assumption that we are making right now is that in a certain time window the beat occur in a periodic fashion that we have some periodicity or local periodicity in our music signal at every or most of the time intervals so now we are going to use basically two techniques uh, we are going to arrive at the same conclusion using two different techniques however they produce different results but the thing we want to achieve is tempo estimation so we can either use the autocorrelation tempogram or we can use a Fourier temp tempogram Auto correlation tempogram. So, what we are going to do here is uh, we are going to use auto correlation. So, we have our novelty curve. So, we will pick a region of suppose 3 or 4 seconds in this novelty curve and we are going to correlate that window with time lag value of itself. By that, I mean, is 
suppose we have picked a like this window here and what we are doing here is we are computing like correlating this value and generating this dot which is a correlation value between these two windows and then we are going to shift this window to the next point and then we are going to compute another value and similarly we are computing the other values so this whole signal is just a time lag representation in which the first value denote when our two windows are on top of each other and as we slide this like cut it window our val other values are getting computed now this is what we call as correlation plot so now the, what does this correlation plot symbolizes it symbolizes that whenever in this time lag we have a high value it means there's a high correlation between the two graphs and it also relieved that the regions are self similar by that i mean is that this region is kind of self similar more than this region so because we are shifting the windows across the time lags so if there is a some local, like periodicity going on so it will cover that so now uh, the time lag signals are generally useless so we need to convert them into tempo or beats per minute so for that we are going to use this formula and in this way we can convert them into beats per minute and then we interpolate that and we arrive at this like this kind of a graph so let me just uh, explain what this graph means it means that we have observed this kind of tempos in in that little uh, correlation plot right and that correlation plot symbolizes only this part not the other part we are going to come on that later so now uh, here it symbolizes that the maximum correlation obtained is roughly 80 and then we have a spike at 120 something and then 230 something right so now uh, we are going to use this as a template and we are going to compute similar like this correlation plot for multiple for multiple clips like we are going to take this clip we are going to take this clip and some similarly other clips and we will have a large number of these correlation plots so then what we can do is we can just uh, use this plot and stack them here so as you can see that this region symbolizes this region and the other region like if you like take this region it must have symbolizes this region and similarly so on so now what's the meaning of this colored graph so it might not be cleared here but if you looked into this interpolated graph you will notice that these value denote exactly the same thing which we have occurred here for example there's a high peak around 80 here there's a peak around 80 here there's a peak around 120 here there's a peak around 120 here and short short peaks around you know 30 35 something 38 and similarly 43 something like that and similarly it's happening here so the each peak is directly mapped to peaks here and these are just a small region and we have computed this graph multiple times so we just tag them together and that's how we obtained our tempogram graph based on autocorrelation and when we rescale that um, to a certain you know tempo beats per minute and we go to a graph like this so yeah for a tempogram so Fourier tempogram is nothing just a short term Fourier transform of the novelty function which we have obtained earlier so to compute this uh, spectrogram so what we need is hope length which is very small maybe one or two since a uh, novelty function you know is, a, is computing frame instant frame something like that so once we obtained our tempogram 
you might have noticed that this tempogram is in beats per minute instead of hertz and one of the things to note is for practical reason we don't you know compute uh, this spectrogram in higher ranges we just compute in ranges between 330 to 600 uh, tempo beats per minute and the reason behind that is in that in practical application uh, what we notice is the temporal separation roughly between you know 100 millisecond or 2 seconds which is 330 to 600 beats per minute contribute most to the perception of tempo and we can just take you know a considerable size of 4 to 12 second of audio to compute this uh, tempogram so now uh, as you can see right uh, so what does this tempogram denotes so if you look at the, this tempogram like you can see that you know there's a red curve here like the red signal here which is the highest value so it denotes that a dominant signal is roughly around between 200 to 250 which is around 220 or something like that and it's slightly increasing with time All right so the color denotes the strength of the signal so we have some weaker signal here but the ma major signal is roughly on 220 which is uh, the tempo which is saying it, the signal has now another aspect about the Fourier tempogram is that uh, it contains local periodicity by that I mean is uh, if we pick some region in the tempogram like uh, we have a novelty function here we can just you know compare it with some windows sinusoid uh, so here's an example of a window sinusoids so there will always be some sinusoids which you know compare with this uh, novelty function perfectly not perfectly like mostly so a high correlation of this indicates that there is a periodicity of certain sinusoid frequency and uh, we can just use you know uh, short term Fourier transform to compute that uh, so this is a Fourier tempogram which is basically nothing but uh, a spectrogram of novelty curve we have seen two methods to compute tempo one is Fourier and the other is autocorrelation so let's see the difference between them so in Fourier what we do is we just compare novelty curve with different sinusoidal kernels ex explained here and uh, it represents certain tempo where is an autocorrelation what we do is we compare novelty curve with time shifted copies of itself as you noted we had a window which was sliding in nature it was comparing the same signal again and again just a different time lag version so the Fourier tempogram what does it it reveals certain periodic sequence of peaks and whereas the autocorrelation tempograms reveal cell similarities because you know we are doing autocorrelation there so another thing which we haven't discussed in detail is that the Fourier was emphasized more on harmonics and whereas you know the autocorrelation is about mostly about subharmonics beat tracking so let's take the output of Fourier tempogram and build on top of that. So we all know that uh, this is a Fourier tempogram and it expects some local periodicities in its design. So by that I mean is like every entry in the tempogram denotes certain sinusoid of corresponding frequency which it has maximum correlation with and the value is the magnitude of that suitable Fourier constant for example this uh, rectangular region denotes this sinusoidal component or window so similarly 
every entry will denote something like that now what you are going to do is like let me just uh, explain how we are computing that so, so for example let me pick different points across this Fourier tempograms and as you can see that when we are taking the first point it is maximum correlating with this window sinusoid which is of roughly around 160 beats per minute so as you can see it's 160 beat per minute and the second one is around 100 beat per minute so as you can see there's a 100 beat per minute and the last one is around 240 so it's a 240 so every entry will have a particular sinusoid so the idea of whole is to maximize that coefficient such that we pick only that sinusoid which has the maximum like uh, correlation so now uh, we have like a large number of these curves because you know we have multiple points like points close to each other so we have all these overlapping kernels so what we are going to do is we are only interested in keeping only one kernel per frame by that i mean suppose if we have a 10 second window every second or every point of this graph will have only a single value so what we do is we just accumulate all the kernels and just obtain a single value from top of that so this is the accumulation of the all the kernels so now uh, we can just you know set the negative value as zero so we don't need that so what you have here is like you have here is a nice looking signal which is kind of different from the original novelty curve but it is capturing various events so what you are having is you are having a predominant local pulse so let's compare so originally the novelty curve was kind of a noisy it has peaks but certain peaks are small and kind of a blurred so whereas on the other hand the PLP curve is more refined so you what you can see is it enhances certain weak signals which were earlier not easy to detect because as you can see this right so it has enhances that signal by accumulating all the local kernels so it makes it easier to detect local frequency because because the accumulation effect it enhances those weak signals so that it they should be more clearer in that way we will be able to detect more node onset better as compared to earlier so it can be considered as an enhancement to the original novelty curve however it's up to like uh, the like the user who wants to decide whether you want to work with a directly novelty curve or you want to work with a plp pulse so the difference between both is that you know uh, no novelty curves indicate onset candidates whereas plp curve is more about enhancement of those novelty curves so in novelty curve the extraction occur in particular soft onset meaning there is some error because in soft onsets we are not able to clearly see the peaks because of you know the differentiation value not being larger whereas in the PLP curve when we accumulate the local periodicity kernels it increases the value as a, as a result the robustness increases so now in novelty curve we have like peak picking problem we don't want to pick define a threshold something like that whereas in the plp curve since we are using local kernels it handles tempo tempo variation with really well because you know local periodicity is zero so now we can increase on uh, the, these uh, modification by you know like we can add some look like we can refine the range of the kernel that we are using in our plp curve we want to introduce like a better curve that's completely up to us if we know about the signal like the music we are working with earlier we can just 
no change our kernel duration like instead of four second we might use six second seven second ten second window or we can just reduce uh, the range of the kernel so these uh, onsets will act as a beats Let's code. So first, we are going to use the library name as Libroska for most of our tasks. So just type in import Libroska in show version. It will show you that the Python we are using is 3.7 and the Libroska version is around 0.8. Now let's just import some libraries and our example file on which we are going to operate, whose name is choice. So let's play choice and see how it feels like. So as you can see the example contains lots of beats sound so it's a good candidate for onset and you know beat detection so then uh, the next step is to load that file name for that we are going to use the load function it will give us output like frames which is an integer containing all the data elements in the music file sampling rate which is in hertz so right now we the sampling rate says around 22,000 hertz so the next step is to detect onset trend. So we like uh, remember the first part where we were saying that measure onset trend. So we can do that with a single function in which we only need to pass out the hope length and then you know the FFT values, which is around 200 and 2048, and all the other things we have passed similarly. And there is uh, we got frames, and then we can convert. Uh, that onset events that we have found to the timestamps of the in the musical signal. So we are just going to use frames to time. It will tell us okay at this time this frame has this onset. So when we upload that, we will see uh, something like this. This is our novelty curve or novelty function. So as you can see, we have many peaks or many not onset candidates right now. So the next step is to plot a tempogram. So we are going to uh, plot both Fourier as well as auto correlation for tempogram. So let's first see the Fourier tempogram. For that, you just use uh, Librosa dot short term Fourier transform and then do, do absolute on top of that. And here you get this now it's looking for uh, tempogram. As you can see, the x-axis denotes the the number of seconds the video has. So the video has twenty five seconds as denoted here. And you can see the 25 second frame here. So you can also plot the auto correlation tempograms. So let let's dive into it. So uh, instead of plotting the entire like uh, music signal, let's just plot only you know up to 100 to 500 frames because it's uh, auto correlation takes a small sample and then analyzes it. So when we are taking a small sample, this is how it looked like. And then just take uh, like log 1p and auto correlate, and this is what your auto correlation function will look like. And then you can just uh, do that beats per minute, like uh, you can use that uh, simple 60 by frame time function. So that will give you this nice looking plot in which you can see that this plot has a tempo here 140 something. Here 90 something and here 70 something. So you can see a lot of tempos here. So now this only denote to a particular like a small sample or small area in the complete tempogram. And we were just showing you how to compute the tempo. But we are not going to compute this uh, function for each and every window. So we instead we can just use that Librosa or feature or tempogram. It will do the you know rest automatically so as you can see uh, it computed a tempogram and uh, we have a global tempo which is around 135 so as you can see here 135 right so it's a main global tempo which is a main we have many small tempos which you can see here or 
you can say it's a known one that can date uh so now in the to estimate the beat track uh we can use the similar function like onset strength and then pass that onset analog to beat track function right and that will give you the frame beats you can do it directly as commented here but let's do on top of novelty curve so when you have done it on novelty curve you will have these frames which points to beats as detected by the beat algorithm you can convert these to time so you can see that at point 0.6 a beat occurs and next beat occurred point 48 and similarly point 92 something like that and you can just plot like a spectrogram and in behind you can plot on top of novelty curve that exactly what point the beat has occurred so as you can see right uh, you are just plotting beat frames not here so now let's listen to the original audio again right and we have overlapped the click sound at the time when the beats are detected with the original frame and this is how it look like so yeah that marks the end of the video